Hi everybody, Chad German here. I'm gonna go over load calculations in Article 220 today. That's a subject that uh, a lot of people really struggle with. They don't use it on a daily basis. And it's one of those that, um, you know, certain people in the industry use it a lot. But for the most part, every an everyday electrician doesn't sit down and do load calculations, but it's part of 90% of uh, our nation's testing on journeyman tests and master electrician tests and things of, of that nature. So. Um, I get this question, I teach a lot of these classes and it's a, and it's an article that I could teach for hours on end. So I don't wanna make this a boring video where we're just sitting and going over code. That seems to be the thing people do is we just, we cover the material and then the guy's going, oh, I fell asleep 10 minutes into this video. So I'm trying to do my best to change it up. Um, you'll see that I've done multiple videos on this and I'm gonna compile them in uh, to hopefully help them make sense uh, for Article 220 and hopefully it can help you pass your tests. Hey Chad German here. I'm here with the National Electrical Code book and I was doing a video real quick for the college I work at. Um, but I thought, heck, I'm, I'm set up perfectly for a quick video for my social medias. So um, on navigating the code book, if you look at Article 90.3 with code arrangements, it lays it out in chapters. Chapter 1, Chapter 2, Chapter 3, and so forth. Um, for an example, Chapter 2 is wiring protection. In Chapter 2, we have Article 220, which is load calculations. And in Article 220, I have parts, okay? And you have these numerical numbers over here, and I've... I'm showing you here what they are. It doesn't show that in the code book. It just gives you the numerical number, obviously. Um, so now we're going to talk about chapter 220, sorry, article 220 in chapter 2. Um, and we're going to talk about the parts. Okay, so part 1 is general, part 2 is branch circuit, part 3 is feeders and load calculations. Uh, it should say services, feeders and services calculations. I didn't write that down. And then um, part uh, 4 is optional feeder and service load calculations, and part five is farm uh, calculations, okay? So here's where something that's important. I had a guy call me and say, uh, why is it that they talk about show windows in, our, in chapter two, article 220, um, and he said it's in 220.14G and 220.43, and they say the same thing. What's the point? Well, if you look at what we're doing here, uh, 220.14G, is telling us that a show window has 200 volt amps per linear foot of show window for adding a branch circuit to an existing service because we're in part two, it's talking about adding a branch circuit, okay? Uh, part three in 220.43, it's talking about you're sizing a service. You're gonna size a service that already has a show window and it still says 200 volt amps per linear foot. So they say the same thing and it seems like it's repeating itself but it's not because you're talking about two different areas. One is adding a branch circuit and the other one is, add, is, is sizing a service. So understand the parts where you're at in, the, in the, uh, the article you're at, in the chapter you're at. I hope that helps out. There's a lot of guys that are gonna be like, oh, this is old news, but there's a lot of apprentices that watch and I hope that helps you guys out in school. Okay, so from that last video, you saw that parts and sections of the code book are very important, and there's no exception to that with, with Article 220. I have a tendency to say chapter, chapter two, Article 220. Now, with that being said, I wanna go over the general, part one, and it's gonna be a short little a video here because part one's only got three, three, uh, article, or three little parts to it. It's got um, 220.1, which is scope. That's gonna be, uh, scope is going to be the point one in any article. Uh, and then it goes to point three, which is um, other articles. So other articles covered um, that covers calculations in the NEC. So it's just saying if you're trying to calculate uh, everything off of Article 220, uh, you might not be able to go to these other articles, and you might be able to pull. I mean, you will be able to pull it together and make it work. Then you go to Article 220.5. Now 220.5 talks about calculations. The first part in 220.5a gives us the voltages that this particular uh, article is talking about. 120, 120, 208, or sorry, 208, 120 is how it's worded in the code. 480, um, go ahead and go take your code book and look at that and see what 220.5 point, uh, point 
5a is talking about. And then the next one I want to spend a second on is 220.5b. And it says a fraction thereof. And I've, I've actually had situations where people are doing calculations or they do Ohm's law per se, or a size of wire. Um, and then they'll say, well, I get a round up or round down because of 220.5. And, and I'm like, well, you're talking about sizing a wire or you're talking about uh, doing a calculation from Ohm's law to figure out your amperage on something. That's not telling you to round down. This is talking about load calculations. Okay, this is talking about this article. If 220.5 was to talk about the whole code book, they wouldn't have it in 220. They would have it in article 100 or article, you know, probably right next to 90.8, which is unit of measurement in, um, in article 90. So this is specific to load calculations. And what it says is when you do these calculations and you figure out the math, um, you can go to 0.5% decimal, not for 0.5% you know, pretty much 50%, but 0.5 using decimal fraction. So um, you can round up or round down using 0.5 uh, when you're calculating a load for, uh, for load calculations, okay? And that's not for sizing wire. That's not for uh, anything of, of outside of this article. So I hope that helps you. This next one we're going to go over is article or is going to be part two. Okay, so now we're going to go into part two, which is branch circuit calculations. And behind me is a bunch of electrical equipment. Um, you can see that these are uh, uh, cabinets or panel boards. Um, up above here, we have the, the wire way. A lot of guys call that a, uh, a gutter. And out of that, we have all the, uh, the, uh, the branch circuits. Uh, I'm not sure if there's a feeder. There's a possible feeder coming out of there with this bigger pipe. I don't know where that goes. Um, but all these other pipes here, um, they're smaller pipes. They've got branch circuits in them. They go out to the loads that uh, pull amperage and get fed voltage um, that we use on a, on a daily basis. And I'm in the school here. So um, let's look at 220 um, on part two. It starts at uh, 220.12, I believe. 220.10 is general, but it's general for branch circuits. And then it moves on. One thing you want to pay attention to is table 220.12. And 220.12 is going to give you the volt amps per square foot on diff different occupancies. Now, and if you're in the 2017 and older, they're going to have dwelling units in the 220.12. But in the 2020 code book, they've moved dwelling units out of 220.12 and put them into 220.14J and it's still three volt amps per square foot. So how you would use that is if you had, um, let's say you had a house and you're in the 2017 code book, you would go to 220.12, scroll down to dwelling units and scroll over and it would say three volt amps per square foot. And that's gonna account for uh, your general lighting. Um, that's gonna account for your receptacles. Um, you got some stuff that's not gonna count that we'll talk about in a second that's gonna be in other areas, uh, your small appliance brand circuits, your, your uh, other you know other other sections there so I'll get in that that's going to be in part three but in make sure you pay attention in particularly with 220.14 220.14 uh, uh, G is going to be show windows and and different areas like that so it gives you specific branch circuits like where these go they go to specific loads 220.10 um, through I think it's 16 where does it where do we end here actually uh, part 3 starts in 220.40 which the code before that is 220.18 so 220.18 is the end of section 2 and uh, that's all talking about branch circuits so the different loads that are going to be fed from here and how to calculate those okay so now we're in in uh, part 3 and part 4 which is going to be service and feeder calculations. Part three is kind of, it's known as the standard method and part four is known as the optional. It actually says that in the part, the heading of the part there. Um, now they're very similar, but they're different. So let's go over that. Part three, um, the standard method, um, we go through and we go for an example to an electric clothes dryer in 220.54 and we see that and we have demand factors that go with this. 
Okay, and I'll explain that in a second. And then we also have 220.55, which is for electric ranges and cooktops. And that has its own separate table with demand factors. And so I want to talk to you for a second about what a demand factor is. If you think of the code sections in 210.52, outlet placements in a dwelling, we have to put receptacles where it tells us in the code uh, in 220.52. So for every 10 feet, not for every, I say that wrong every time. If you have 10 feet or more of hallway, you have to have at least one receptacle. Okay, now in my house, I have that receptacle and um, I have wood floors and we, we mop and we, and we sweep. We don't ever plug anything into my hallway receptacle. We just don't. But by code, it has to be there because we don't want extension cords drug out throughout a house and causing a trip hazard. And, and we all know that the, the National Electrical Code is a safeguard for people. So that's why we have the codes on outlet placements in dwelling units. And, um, and so for that example, um, we don't have everything on all at once. If we were to put like a, a volt amp per receptacle in a house and not have any demand factors, our services would be huge and it would be overkill. If you guys would take some time and go out to your, your service, if you're an electrician that's qualified, don't do this if you're a do-it-yourself at home type person. But uh, if you took an amp clamp and put that on one of your legs and turn everything on in your house, you're not gonna get close to that uh that actual loads on the house in fact that the highest i've ever saw was 83 amps on a house it was a big big house in fact it had a 400 amp service they turned everything on and i put on the amp clamp and i only had 83 amps i was there to troubleshoot why the breaker kept tripping and it happened to just be a bad breaker they never got close to to the 400 amps okay so with that being said if we have all these loads that are in a house and we just size according to that without any demand factors our wires would be huge, our conductors, as well as the services, it would be overkill. So we wanna come closer to reality and we, we have demand factors, which are allowances in the code to allow us to downsize, if you will, uh, I need to come up with a proper terminology for that, um, and so that it fits closer to reality. You know, again, if you have uh, cooktops or um, a bunch of ranges in a multifamily dwelling, um, you're not going to have all those cooktop cooktops or ranges on at the same time. I had one student say, well, Chad, what about Thanksgiving? And I'm like, okay, dude, I don't mean to burst anybody's bubble that lives in an apartment, but if you live in an apartment and you're young, you're probably going to mom's house for Thanksgiving. There's not everybody in that apartment complex that's gonna turn on every heating element, everything as high as it can go, and the whole entire place. And if we, if we sized everything off the nameplate value on how hot it could possibly get or how much load it would possibly draw, and we did that, in 16 units, we would have to have some big wire and it would be unnecessary. So that's why we have demand factors. Now, that is huge when teaching this, okay? So um, demand factors are really important when we're talking about sec uh, part three and part four of 220. Because in part, two, in part three, where we're talking about the standard method, we individually go through and put demand factors on each of these loads, okay? So um, we have demand factors here uh, for for the, uh, the cooktop in 220.55, you go to that table and you go through the scenario in which you have, uh, uh, which you're, you're looking for and it would tell you the demand factors allowed for this cooking unit. Um, and then, and that can be pretty difficult. We'll do other videos on that. Um, and then uh, in 220.54, we have for uh, dryers, okay? So there's demand factors. If you have over four dryers, you start getting some allowances uh, like you, you only have to size it to 70% or 80%, um, 75%, those type of things. So um, you want to pay attention. Again, this, this, this video is not to help you to do a demand factor, but to understand this, the layout of, of uh, chapter 220. Uh, sorry, chapter 2 and article 220. It can get confusing, but um, I hope this helps you guys. And um, uh, so, it, sorry, I, I'm going to go to, <laughs> I keep brushing ahead. I'm going to go to uh, part four. Part four doesn't do individual. You get all the nameplate ratings of the things that are going to be in that, uh, that occupancy, and then you do a demand factor at the end, okay? And you're going to get a smaller number with, uh, with the optional method compared to the standard, um, but you can't downsize a neutral if you're going to do the optional, and you can if you do the standard. So 
those are things that for the for the average person's watching this video if you're just a do-it-yourself at home you're probably gonna be lost that's fine this video is more for the student that's just getting into to load calculations at school and uh, or a guy studying for for a test and doesn't really understand how article 220 works so I hope this really helps you guys okay now we're on part five and if you can see here I did my best the best I could to do a good illustration I got a farmhouse here a hill transformer up on the top of the hill on, on a on a pole and then we feed this house it's important to know that uh, I have a house on this farm because in part five uh, when you get into 220.102 um, it gives you, uh, it says in 220.102a, it actually has dwelling units. So if you have a dwelling unit on a farm, uh, if you read that code, it'll tell you to go to part, part three and part four of 220 to do the load calculation for this house, okay? Um, I like drawing this picture because I see farms all the time and I find them fascinating the way they run cables and wires. In fact, this is considered an overhead outside feeder to feed this thing and you would uh, this uh, farmhouse and that would be found in 225 uh, article 225 out outside um, or outdoor feeders and branch circuits uh, that that gets overlooked a lot but uh, in farmland we do things different um, the cal calculations can be found in for farms here in uh, uh, part five and they start it in 220.100 so look at that and I hope you guys enjoyed this video um, I've made this little compilation of videos for the college, like I said, as an introduction to Article 220. Again, we're not getting into sizing anything at this point, but this video was to just kind of show you the laid out, layout of Article 220. And I do believe as an instructor, one thing that gets lost is we, we just start jumping into how to do load calculations and not how the code book is set up. And so uh, when guys learn how, to, how it's set up, then they can make sense of what it's saying. So I hope you guys enjoy this video and it helps. Please, uh, please let me know if there's any questions you guys have and uh, I would be glad to, uh, to help you guys out.